praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on, let's glorify the Lord on this morning. Thank you for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy, and his kindness that he shows towards us. Amen. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify God on this morning, and we thank him for the ability to be able to stand on our own two feet and be able to walk into the house of God and give him glory, honor, and praise because he alone is worthy of it. Amen. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Can anybody rejoice with me on this morning and be excited that the Lord has allowed us to come together in his house to glorify his great name. Amen. So, Father God, as we enter into your presence, Lord, we say, Lord, you have your way on this morning. You take control of our minds, our thoughts, our very being, Father. In the name of Jesus. And we ask that you forgive us of all our sins, God. That we may be found righteous in your presence. We ask, Lord, that you take control of our thoughts even now. That our minds will be stayed upon you even now in praise and worship. As we create an ideal environment for you. We pray, God, that our minds are upon you and your goodness, your grace, your kindness, and your love towards us, Father. We thank you, O oh God, that we are your children, the sheep of your pasture. Hallelujah. That we can eat and feast on your word, and your word will shift us and move us in the way that we need to go and grow. God, we say, Lord, have your way in the room on this morning. Breathe your breath of life, health, and strength into our very being on this morning. And God, we say thank you for healing today. We say thank you for peace today. Thank you for joy, unspeakable joy today that is full of glory. God, we say thank you for your love, your arms of protection, always being wrapped around us, God. We thank you that you're even retracting our thoughts. You're regrouping our thoughts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And you're showing us how to become more real with you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you stand strong and mighty in our lives, Lord. We thank you that we're rooted and grounded in your power, in your unchanging word. God, we're grateful that your word is springing forth even in our lives, even now. In the name of Jesus, it's flowing like rivers of living water. And God, we say thank you on today for the house of restoration. We thank you, oh God, for every ministry that's going forth in your name today, giving you glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you that we belong to Team Jesus. Doesn't matter who team is playing today, God, we're grateful that we're on your winning side, God. But with you, we win every time. With you, we have victory in all things. With you, we're more than conquerors in every test and trial. And for that, we glorify you. Come on, right where you are, can you glorify the Lord? Can you shout hallelujah to the Lamb of God who was slain for our sins? Come on, can you open your mouth and make a thunderous sound? Because you're on the winning side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify the Lord on today and we thank him for being all to us. Amen. A wonder worker, a miracle worker, a healer, a provider. Come on, can you praise him? Can you open your mouth to glorify and thank him? Hallelujah. God is amazing and he is so worthy to be praised on this morning. Amen. At this time, we're going to move forward into praise and worship and continue to create an ideal environment for our Savior on this morning. Amen. But as we go forth, we're going to ask the Lord to empty us. Amen. So right where you are, can you stand and worship and help us worship the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Empty us, oh God. But we make room for you this morning. Hallelujah. From the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, we make room for you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, can you say something kind to the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Come on, open your mouth to glorify you. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on, open your mouth to glorify you. Holy fire, turn away. Thank you. 
we we'll move forward to the things of our Savior on this morning. Come on, one more time. Glorify the Lord in the house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Lord, my Jesus. Today's scripture is coming from 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 6 through 10. My Lord. And the word of the Lord reads, as the scripture says, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor. Yeah. And anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Yes, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. Yeah. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Yes. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word. And so they meet their faith that was planted for them. But you are not like that. Yeah. For you are a chosen people. Yeah. You. you are royal priests. Yes. Yes. A holy yes. nation. Yes. 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 God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness and to his Thank wonderful Lord. light. Once you have no identity as a people. Now you are God's people. Yeah, yeah, Once yeah. you receive no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. And the word of the Lord has been blessed. Thank the Lord. God, how we come before you. Honoring you, God. Thanking you, God, for another day. God, it was you, Father God, that woke us up this morning, God. God, it was you, Father God, that gave us traveling mercy, God, yes, to come into your house, God, to glorify you and honor you, Father thank God. You, God, it was you, Father God, that protected yes, us, Father God. Yes, God, it was you, God, that brought us to from last Sunday to this Sunday, yes, Father God. Thank you, and God, we just want to say thank you, Father God. God, we ask you, Father God, to forgive us for any sin, God, that we have committed, God, whether it was a word, thought, or even deed, God. God, we just want to bless you and honor you, God, before we go any further, God. God, we want a worship experience with you on this morning, God. God, we want a connection with your spirit, God. God, hover in this place, Father God, like no other, God. God, let your love, God, fill this place, Father God. God, we expecting a mighty word from you on this morning, God. God, that will challenge us, Father God. That will impact our lives, Father God. They will cause us, Father God, to examine ourselves. Thank you. God, if we have not told you, God, this morning, God, we're saying it. Thank you, God. God, shift the atmosphere, God. Let your people be excited, Father God. Because they can breathe the air, Father God, that you've given them, God. God, shift the atmosphere, God, that we can worship you, God, like your word said, God, in spirit, God, and in truth, Father God. God, you shift the atmosphere, Father God. God, that we can hear a word from you, God. God, touch us in a mighty way, Father God. God, you are, you are Jehovah Shalom, God. You are God of peace, Father God. God, let your peace, God, resonate through this world, Father God. Through this nation, Father God. Through this city, Father God. God, if anyone God searching for you, Father God, I pray that they find you. God, I pray that they can come back home to you, Father God. God, I pray a word on today, God, will call them to surrender, God, and come back to you, God. God, we want to thank you, God, for shepherds. Yes, God. Angels of this God. house, God. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you for a man and woman, God, that will stand, God, on your word, God, won't yes, budge and won't move, God. Yes, God. God, thank you for our thinking, God, pastors, yes. God. That's out of your own heart, God. Thank you, Lord. God, I ask you, God, to cover them, God. Protect them, God. Yes. God, I ask you right now, God, to increase their finances like no other God. Because, God, when you are blessing them, God, the house of restoration is you, God. And for God, we just want to tell you thank you, God. God, we pray for every pastor that's preaching your gospel on this morning, God. God, we pray for courage them for them to stand boldly, Father God, in these evil last days, God. God, if someone, God, is need healing, on this morning, God, we asking you, Father God, to heal, Father God. Anybody needs the deliverance, God, we ask you to deliver, Father God. God, let the chains be broken on this morning, God. 
God, we know this Super Bowl Sunday, God. But God, we have the greatest victory at all, God. That Jesus, you died. That I can be standing right here, right now, God. Confessing, God, that you are Lord, God. That you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God. Have your way on this morning, God. Touch us in a mighty way. God, we ask all these things in Jesus Christ. I'll save you, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's glorify our Savior this morning. For he alone is worthy to be praised on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the Lord. You all be seated in the presence of our King on today. Amen. 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 At this time, we'll continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. How many grateful that you gave the Lord your yes a long time ago? Hallelujah. Anybody really grateful? I mean, y'all should have been screaming and hollering at that point that you chose the Lord and you're grateful that he chose you before you chose him. Amen. Amen. So we're so grateful that he's always mindful of us and the purpose and the plans that he has for our lives. Amen. Amen. So on this morning, we just want to continue to give God our response. And that is hallelujah. Hallelujah to any test and trial. Hallelujah in the good and the bad. Amen. I'm on somebody just shout hallelujah. I'll come out saying not because I'm asking you to say it, but you know that's been your own response. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life, and I'm never going back. Yes, Lord. For you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life, and I'm.
Amen. I was listening to them sing, and as I was listening to them sing, just listening to the refrain, they said something that was beautiful and it should be universal for all of us. It's affirmation and declaration. Yeah. It's affirmation because he rescued our lives. He did that. That's an affirmation that we can affirm. It is a declaration because Thank you, Lord. we've openly declared that we're not going back Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to the place in which he has rescued us from. Oh, yeah. Thank That's you, so Lord. important because only a made up mind and a heart that has been committed to God can make that declaration. You got to make it up in your mind. You're not going back. You got to make it up in your mind. It doesn't matter what comes, who comes, what goes, who goes. You made up in your mind. You're not going back. And I'm telling you, this is yes, the best time God. to do it. Because yes. we're in some terrible times. Yes, Lord. And yes, if Lord. you're trying to live without God, you're going to lose every time. Come on, sir. You've got to be in the will of God. Yes. Totally dependent upon God. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. I want us to turn to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Amen. Let me have that phone there later. Genesis, fourth chapter. Amen. We're going to call our attention to verses 1 through 8. Genesis, the fourth chapter. Yes, sir. Say, man, when you're there. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Amen, somebody. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering, I want you to hear this, of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. I, I want you to place beside that up over it or up under it, the word jealous. Wow. And Cain became very jealous. And his countenance did what? It failed. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why are you upset? Why are you jealous? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do what? Well, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, it's important for you to understand that sin is laying at your door. Jesus. And its desire is not for you, but you should rule over it. Yeah. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field 
that Cain rose up against his brother and killed his brother. Father, how we give you glory and honor and praise for this very moment in time in which you've given unto us to celebrate you, God, to honor you, God, to magnify your name, God, to be found, God, with our brothers and our sisters worshiping in spirit and in truth, God, to be able to receive a fresh word, a word, God, that will manifest purpose in our lives. We ask now, God, that your presence will stay here, linger here just a little while longer, yes, God. Lord. Let not the enemy, oh God, snatch our attention, God, but allow us to stay focused yes. in on what you would have us to know. Yes. We tell you that we love you, we bless you, and we glorify you for it now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Let every believer shout, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I want to talk to us from a subject on this morning. Subdue it. All right. Don't let it master you. All right. All right. This is still within the confinements of our series, Renew, because it has everything to yet do with our mind as well. And so I thought it proper to give it the subtopic, subdue it, don't let it master you. And I pulled that from verse number seven, where God says to Cain, you should rule over it. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you should master what you're feeling yes. right now. Yes. And so as I begin to read this, it Bless me because when we look at Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel represents the motif of sibling rivalry and competing against one another. Wow. And it is not the case with Abel per se, but it is with Cain. And I do want to say this at the outset, that every parent that is a parent and understand their children well know that when you have children and you start loving on children mm -hmm. and children start getting older and you got to spend more time with the younger child or the younger children, amen, because they are being left in the home, there seems to be a level of jealousy forming and the older children because the older children doesn't feel as valued. Or sometimes there can be one child in which the siblings feel that the parent is spending more time with. Hmm. And as a result, jealousy is born. Yeah. And or there could be sometimes that siblings see giftings and talents and anointings uh, in their other sibling, amen, and that develops a sense of rivalry. And so I want us to understand that because it's important for us to see this, that that's just not happening in the natural. That happens in the spirit. Yes, yes. Uh, it happens in the church the same way. Amen, somebody. Amen. Just as it happens in our physical homes, it happens in our spiritual home. And it's important that we really understand that whenever God gets rid of the blessing individual, God is not biased. Yes, thank you, Lord. That, that God doesn't have respect of persons. Yes. That, that, that God will not do anything that will cause you to become jealous of another individual because he is playing sides. Come on now. There is no, the Bible says, partiality with God. That what he does for one, yes, he will do for the next. Yes. That the Bible says, if we ask, it will be what? It will be given unto us. Yeah. If we knock, the door will be open. Okay. If we will seek, he says, we would find. Yeah. And so I want to draw our attention back to the text because this blessed me when I begin to read it. And I need you to understand that the Bible does not tell us why God was displeased with Cain's offering. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't mean that Cain actually brought God what was left over because the Bible says that, watch this, that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord, right? Doesn't mean that he gave him what was left over or he gave him what he wanted to give him per se, all right? And I need us to understand this because when we try to sometimes give explanation, sometimes it's more like uh, uh, speculation. And, and so if the Bible doesn't give you a precise explanation of why something has happened, you can't speculate. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so when you look at this, obviously that was something within the confinement of why God was not satisfied with Cain's offering. And it's actually found in the scripture, and I want to show it to you right here. In verse 7, watch this. God says, if you do well, actually what is happening is whatever it was, obviously, that Cain was bringing to God, it wasn't well. Watch this. He says, Will you not be accepted if you do what's well, if you do what is right? We don't necessarily know what it was that Cain had not done. It could have been how he was offering it or presenting it to God. Amen, somebody. And that's the case with so many of us. We're wondering why God's not receiving our worship. You need to determine how you're offering that worship. My, my. And sometimes when we try to offer people things, it's the motives and the attitude that we are offering it with. Mm -hmm. Your posture is everything when you come before God. Yeah. Yes. And so it could have been that his posture was off. And so watch this. He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, watch what he says. He says, sin is lying at your door. But I like what he says next. Watch this. It says, and its desire is for you. In other words, what he is saying is, if you don't hurry up and deal with this ASAP, it's going to deal with you. He says, but it should rule over you, which means that God is taking his time to coach Cain through this situation so that Cain don't make the wrong decision. How many times in life has God actually put somebody in our path to help us to make the right decision and yet we still chose to do the wrong thing? So I looked up the word jealousy, and I'm going to give you a couple of definitions because there is one that stands out to me that I really think that you need. Jealousy is when you are hostile towards a rival, one believed to enjoy an advantage. So the fact that Cain was looking at Abel and saw how God treated Abel because God received his offering and God blessed him and God looked on him with favor. The Bible said God respected his offering. Yes. But when Cain gave his offering, it was not respected because Cain didn't do well, obviously, in the presentation of what he was giving God. Or he didn't do well in what he was giving God. We don't know, but obviously there is something that is wrong. And Cain knows right well what is wrong. But rather than going back and correcting what is wrong, what Cain continues to do is look on his brother with disdain. You would be amazed at how many people sit around you walk around you, live around you, work around you, who are jealous of you, and you don't even know it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jealous every time they see you, but they've subdued it and restrained it so well right. that you will never be able to detect it because people put on face well yeah. in public. Yes, sir. And so watch this. Envy, and I'm going to tell you the difference between jealousy and envy. Envy is a feeling of disconnected, discontented rather, or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or their luck. Right. Now, obviously, we don't believe in luck. Right. But here's the thing that you got to understand. If you spend time being jealous over what somebody else has, 
you've not spent enough time with God. Yes, yes. I'm, 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 I'm here. Yes. And here's the thing that you got to understand. When you are jealous with people, and I'm moving ahead of myself, I'll say this again. When you are jealous, jealousy is a sign of unfinished soul work. Wow. Yes, that's good. That's what jealousy is. It's, it, it, it's, it's a sign of unfinished soul work. The fact that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. The fact that God shows no partiality, that simply means that if you desire it, the Bible says he will give you what? The desires of your heart when you delight yourself in him. If you desire a thing and you see somebody else with it, watch this, you got to be careful that covetousness has not grabbed your loins. You don't look at what somebody else has or what somebody else is doing and desire what they have and what they are doing because covetousness speaks to the fact that you're moving in on illegal territory, something that does not belong to you but belongs to another. That's why the Bible said don't covet your neighbor's wife, don't covet your neighbor's possessions and nothing else. Why? Because when you do that, you fall into the temptation of danger. David, when David looked over and he saw a woman that he wanted so desperately and he wanted her so bad that murder arise in his heart and the Bible said he killed a man just to get what it was that he wanted in that momentary time, a brief moment of pleasure. The brevity of it. It was so short lived. But yet the man, Uriah, was dead forever. Mm -hmm. You gotta be careful. Yes, Lord. That you ain't looking at somebody else. Watch this. And I, 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 I know it, but I ain't, I ain't gotta put nobody on spot here. Some of us in here right now, we said, Lord, help me, Jesus. Yeah. Some of you are watching, you said, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me not to look at what somebody else yeah. has and lust after what they have. Yeah. God, help me to walk in what it is you have called me to walk in and understand my purpose so that I don't get caught up conflicting with what it is that somebody else has versus what it is yeah. you have for me. Yeah. Watch this. I'm going to say this. Glory I'm going to say God. this. Glory to God. I'm going to say this. Yes, Lord. I remember when I was a young boy and my friend had his daddy and his mama. Mm -hmm. And I would always go to their house and be received like a son. I could walk in and out of that house like I lived there. It was a blessing, it was an honor, it was a privilege. But one day, something got a hold of me. I was already received, going in and out just like I lived there, spent the night there, didn't have to call mama and ask mama if I could spend the night. I mean, the house was in walking distance, but something got a hold of me one day. My. Every time I looked up, he was getting a new pair of shoes, mm. new game new bike, new clothes, and I walk in and it was nothing to him, and here I am looking like, hey, I'm gonna help you. When I saw it, I got very jealous. I said, man, where my dad at? Y'all don't wanna talk to me. Come on. Made me real angry. I got jealous of him. Listen, that's when I stole my first pair of tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Look at y'all. Mm -hmm. Come on. I remember back in the day when Target, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all don't remember this. But Target was selling ponies and Nikes. Y'all ain't talking to me. I walked up in there, put me a pair of Nikes on, left my old shoes in the box. Walked around the store like I was looking for something long enough to make sure wasn't nobody following me. Mm -hmm. But watch this. When I walked out the store, I took the shoes off. 
and I put them in the dirt and got them real dirty. Mm. Then I took some glass and cut them up just a little bit. <laughs> Because I knew that when I got home, if I got home with some new shoes on my feet and my mama didn't buy them, she was going <laughs> to ask me where I got them from. And the first thing was going to come to her mind that I stole them. And if she knew that I stole them, I was going to get beat. So I put enough dirt on them and cut them up real good to just make sure she wouldn't question me. And she still questioned me, whose shoes you got on? Uh, Tony gave them to me, mama, because you know he didn't need them no more. They were old. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and I walked with them shoes on because I was ready to go to school. I could get them home and clean them up. Right. <laughs> when I cleaned them up, I wore them with everything I had until the bottom fell out of them. <laughs> you gotta be careful with being jealous of people. Yeah. I can tell you right now that ain't a man or woman that walked this earth that I'm jealous of. Come on, say it, say it, say it. Let me help you. I don't allow jealous people to be around me. The first thing I do when I detect jealousy is I get lost. Yes, Because I can't stand people who build themselves based on their possessions, based upon their careers, yeah. based upon their education, based upon, based upon their looks and all. I ain't got time for all that. Right. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I am secure and confident in who I am. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's why I can't be around people and bow down to people for the sake of being around people. Amen. The Bible said that the rich and the poor meet together. They have this thing in yes, common sir. that God is the creator and the maker yes, of them both. Yes, sir. That's the word. Yes. That when you understand jealousy, jealousy will literally erode your emotions. Jealousy corrupts you. Yes, yes. And it's important that we see this and we understand this. So watch this. Although we use envy and jealousy together, I'm going to give you these two definitions because it's important that we see it. All right? Amen. Envy, envy, because they, too, they both have distinctive meanings. Envy is the painful feeling of wanting what someone else has. So you envy them. I envy you. No. I learned years ago. Stop trying to envy folks. Yes. Because if you ain't willing to go through what they had to go Say through that. to get yeah. what it is that they get. Say that. Say that. You own it. You don't want it. People can look at your life and say, Oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish if, if if you knew what I went through. You want it? People just want to take a pill and overnight and be healed. No, it can't. It don't work that way. <laughs> if I'm walking in healing, I've been through some things. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whether it's healing in my body, healing in my mind, healing in my relationships, I had to go through things to get this level yes, of healing. Lord. So envy is the painful feeling of wanting what someone else has, like their attributes or their possessions. While jealousy, jealousy is to feel threatened. Uh-oh. <laughs> jealousy is to feel threatened or fearful of losing one's position or situation to somebody else. My. Cain is the older son. Cain was born first. Cain was here first. And so now it is that the Lord has opened the womb of this woman Eve and allowed her to bring forth another son. Watch this. Now Cain feels threatened. It's all right if she brings forth a daughter, but she has brought forth a son. You'll be amazed, you'll be amazing how your brothers and your sisters are competing against you and you ain't even studying them jokers. Listen, come on. Jesus, help us. They're going to always tell you what they got. Right. Always 
telling you what they just accomplished. Always telling you what they got going on. Oh, cool. You got to be careful. Because the more you expose, the more you will be exposed. When you expose all of the stuff that you got going on, people start getting jealous. I mean, God, I'm more qualified than this person, God. I mean, I've been living a long time, God, and, and, and I ain't never experienced. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Joseph said, you made from my evil. Yes. 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 But God made it good. Your own family can be bloodthirsty murderers. Say it, son. Say it. People you grew up with ate at the same doggone table with, slept in the same bed together, wore the same drawers together. You ain't talking to me. The same sock. You, 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 you ain't hearing me. Y'all did all of this together, and now here comes a dagger. And the truth is, listen, sister Denise, they were waiting to kill you uh, when they got the opportunity. And now the opportunity has emerged, and so they've taken it. Let me tell you something. You can kill me, but my destiny still lives. You can kill me, but my destiny still lives. The Bible says that God came to Cain and said, Cain, where is your brother Abel? He said, I don't know am I my brother's keeper. He said, I hear the blood of your brother Abel crying out from the very ground that you have brought me fruit from that I have rejected. So as a result my. the ground would never yield a strength to you. My, my. My, my, my. Mm. Put something in the ground he said it ain't gonna no. work. Jesus. And you know God says tell you what Cain you're going to be a vagabond. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a drifter. You're going to be rejected everywhere you go. And then watch what happens. He says, watch this. He said, that's too harsh for me, God. Uh -huh. He didn't repent for killing his brother. Uh -huh. He said, God, that's too harsh because people are going to try to kill me. He said, no. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm putting a mark on you. And anybody touch you, they're going to suffer seven times worse than you. My. You better be careful. Mm -hmm. you, you, you better be careful. Jesus. Around here being envious and jealous about people. I ain't trying to keep up with nobody. Come on. That's it, sir. That's it. And the way you keep yourself foundational and structure is that you gotta learn how to walk by yourself. Yeah. Up. You don't need people always affirming you. Because when you lack affirmation, jealousy is born. Yes, sir. Truth here. Mm. Everybody ain't gonna affirm you. And so if you don't get that affirmation, do understand that God has already affirmed you. Yes, thank you. He's Lord. already approved you. He's already thank authenticated Lord. you. Why do I know this is true? Thank because you heal. Thank you, Lord. If God devalued who you were, you would be dead. Right. That's it. If God's hand wasn't on your life, you wouldn't be in here this morning. That's right. You wouldn't even have a desire to be in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Can't be jealous of folks. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who they are. That's right. I don't care what they have. Come on, sir. It's dangerous. So dangerous. Somebody shout it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Watch this. Some of the other components of jealousy is greed. Mm -hmm. You're greedy. Why? Just greedy. And, and, and watch this. You'll be amazed. People who got more than you jealous of you. Yeah. 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 The 
folk got way more than you, and you slick looking at them, be like, Lord, I can't wait for you bless me like that, God. And they round yourself and stand. Yeah. They got more than you. And you walking around them, amen. You respect them and you acknowledge them, yeah. and they looking at you with a grim smile, yeah. a smirk like this. Tell him, go way up with your man's hell. <laughs> Somebody else Watch this. Because I'm going to get into this if time permits me. We can't just deal with jealousy without dealing with bitterness. Ooh. You'll be amazed at how many people have dug graves for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But you keep escaping. Thank you, Lord. They dug the grave for you, Brittany, but they can't bury you. See, they not happy until you are in the grave. Yes, sir. Man, you teach it. And so what you got to understand is that when people are digging graves with you, watch this, y'all ain't going to like this, but I got to tell you, God will start to secretly and silently cut the cord and disconnect you from them and you'll be wondering what happened to so and so what? what what's going on no 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 god saved you because yes. god saw something that you couldn't see that's why the bible said he's my real lord yes. because can't not sneak up on me yes. Yes, you better know it to be true People have a problem with people who obey God and God builds them and make them successful. Yes. Yes. Jesus says, I am nothing in and of myself. He told the disciples, you can do nothing apart from me. If you don't remain connected to the root, you can't bear no fruit. And Cain is able. Cain, 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 Cain is angry rather. Because of what's going on in his brother life. Watch this. Not only is greedy a component of jealousy, insecurity. You, you ain't secure in your own self. You fragile. You fickle. You unstable in your own self, and people can affirm you, but your insecurity will continue to knock it down. Yes. Watch this covetousness. Another component is this, and y'all ain't gonna like it, but I'm gonna tell you, you're selfish. Because when you get jealous, you don't think of nobody but you. You can't even celebrate the fact that God doesn't bless somebody else. So you don't got selfish and got jealous. Well, what about me, God? <laughs> Has that your servant label at the altar, God? <laughs> Ain't I done paid my tithe in my offering, God? <laughs> well, I fast six days a week. Y'all ain't talking to me. Just... Just, just telling God what you done done for him as if the breath that you are breathing and the next one that you take wasn't enough. What's this? What's this? Selfish. What's this? Maliciousness. Woo! See, that's the part. That's the part. That, 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 that one. That's the part that God was telling Cain to make sure it didn't rule him. Because when malice is born, murder is born. See, malice means to do people harm. Somebody walking by and you stuck your feet out and said, oh, I'm so sorry. Premeditated. Lord, I pray that they walk by here and break their wrist so they can't tighten no more, God, and I get the position. The Bible wow. says promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. The Lord pulls one down and exalts another. Promotion comes from the Lord. You know, tripped the folk up, broke the folk wrist, amen, and they at home tightening. Just done gave them. Still working. You know what I mean? Just all on the internet talking about still getting paid. You know what I mean? 
You sitting up here just mad, just like, oh! All in the restroom, beating up the stalls, I mean, tearing stuff up, boom, 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 people coming in. Hey, you all right? Yeah, oh, I slipped and fell. That's some water down there, hey, amen. Now you got to stick your hand in the nasty toilet and put water on the floor, hey, amen. Make it look like you slipped. Somebody shout what your nasty self. Nasty self. Jealousy causes you to become nasty. Your disposition. Just nasty, your persona, your demeanor, everything about you just nasty. Have you ever seen a beautiful woman, beautiful as she can be, everything you would have ever dreamed of just nasty? Yeah. Yeah. Just I can't stand her. Yep. Brothers think he got it going on and you be like, oh yeah. Oh, I, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. You'll be amazed at how many men are married to beautiful women. And and, and, and and you acknowledging how beautiful that man woman is and this is that and other, he'd be like, hmm, if I can give her to you today. <laughs> I sign the paper and y'all can walk away. <laughs> and it's for free. And I will pay alimony, amen. Yeah, Just to take her away from me. People will pay to have people out of their life. Yeah, absolutely. Because they nasty. Whenever a spouse is jealous of their spouse, it's dangerous. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't care how much money your, your spouse make, amen, you celebrate your spouse. Yeah. And let me tell you this, y'all ain't finna like what I'm about to say. We find this a lot Men, when their wives are making more than them, they get jealous because they don't feel like no man. Let me help y'all. I remember. Come on. I remember. Lord, have mercy. I was broke as a joke. My change was real strange. My credit just could not get it. And you know, money was real funny. And she was making it. And I said, well, praise the Lord. Because the bill's still getting paid. Get paid. And so when we go out and we eat, I don't care how much money she got in her purse, she ain't paying for it. Mm -mm. Slide that on over here. Right. <laughs> in fact, let me get that before we go on the door. <laughs> get that before we go on the door. Amen. So. Right. I'm going to pay for our dinner tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. And she gonna sit there and be like, oh, thank you, man. I'll be man in time. <laughs> in time, girl. <laughs> My Lord. But now God has blessed me. Yes, yes. yes. See, listen. <laughs> God can't celebrate you until you learn how to celebrate others. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And so it's important that in relationships that a husband and a wife, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, My. fiancés, okay. that you don't start fighting against one another because one is making more one money the than the other. Right. That's why it's important that you have one pot and know what's coming in and know what's going out. Oh, somebody said, mm, no, I'm going to keep my little seat standing. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. I mean, you bless that too. All right. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So now watch this. Proverbs 33 and 9 through 10. This is what Cain should have understood. All right? Honor the Lord with your possession uh -huh. and with the first fruits of all your increase. Yeah. So your bonds will be filled with what? Plenty. Yeah. And your vents will overflow with what kind of wine? New, New wine. wine. Listen to me, people of God. When God increases you, you give to God the first of that yes. increase. Yes. Don't be sitting up holding on to stuff and wondering why everybody around you is blessed and everybody around you is going up and seem like you at a standstill. Look at what's in your hand. Yes. That's right. If you continue to hold on to what it is that God desires, not that God needs it, God wants to know if you're going to be faithful and giving. 
Then Proverbs 11 and 25. The generous soul will be made rich. Yes. Did you hear that? The generous soul will be made rich. Uh -huh. And he who waters will also be watered himself. Listen, if you learn how to water somebody else. Yes. Yes. The Bible says, he who waters will be watered. Yeah. Yeah. You round here all dry. Uh -huh. And wondering why nothing is growing out of the ground of your life. When you reject watering others, water is restricted in your life. I promise you. Now, this is the one I really want to give y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all write this down. Write it down. Write it down. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Jealousy is born in the heart of an individual when that person feels as if their value is being threatened. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Jealousy is born in the heart of an individual when they feel like their value is being threatened. Mm -hmm. When people feel like their value is being threatened. Once you start making relationships and building networks and doing different things and then somebody else comes along that's competent, somebody else comes along that's qualified like you and now you feel like your value in this person's life is being threatened. Mm. And so you become jealous. Uh -huh. You gotta be careful of this. Watch yeah. this. Jealousy goes undetected in people around you at times mm -hmm. because people are good at putting on face in public. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this is why you got to always pray. This is my prayer always. You got to always pray at all times and ask God to not only reveal the hearts of people who are around you, but to reveal the motives of them people. Yes, as well. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. God, show me their heart. Yes. Show me the moment. That's why people who are genuine that are around me, you can't come and talk bad to, them, to, bad to me about them. You can't right. say a mumbling word. I don't care if you got something on them. You can't talk to me bad about them. Nah. Mm -mm. I listen to it. I pull them to the side and say, hey, this came across my desk. I want to talk about it. Well, Bishop, some of it is true, but all right, let, let me hear the true part first. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because I want to know what I'm defending and why I'm defending what I'm defending. Because I'm not going to allow somebody to just come in my pr You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at how many preachers that come in my presence talking about other preachers. And I cite them they do this. Because I'm not going to let you talk to me about somebody else. I know you're about to go and talk about me. Sit in. That's right. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Don't let stuff just come in and trickle down and sit down inside of you. Because when you start hearing things about other people, it causes you to start looking at them people cross-eyed. And they ain't did nothing to you. I will never leverage my relationship over against what somebody else says about that person. Mm -hmm. If you don't like that person, you don't like them. That's you. Mm -hmm. And if I deal with you and I deal with them, you ain't going to talk to me about them and they ain't going to talk to me about you. I'm going to stand in the middle and deal with you. If I got to meet you at Rapidus, I will meet you at Rapidus. If I got to meet you at Red Lobster, I will meet you at Red Lobster. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Pray the Lord. But I'm not going to break a relationship up with somebody else because I remember, Lord, years ago, and I get in trouble about this all the time because I'm just what you call brutally honest. I'm brutally honest. Don't ask me if somebody pretty. Right. If you want to know the truth. For me. Right. Pray the Lord. If you ask me if they're pretty and, and you know, hey. Pray the Lord. I'm just brutally honest. And I get in trouble for this. Uh, some years ago, uh, uh, 
I had been on the scene probably about <laughs> as a pastor. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, that woman I got. <laughs> Lady, <laughs> you little Jake? No. <laughs> no, sir. Listen, been on the scene as a pastor probably about the course of about seven years or so. Seven years. And, and that was a well known pastor. Both of them, both of them are well known pastors. Uh, well-known pastors. One of them I happened to be best friends with at the time, and and another one uh, I had just gained a relationship with him, heard about him, powerful man of God, and so on and so forth. And 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 he wanted me to bring our church to be a part of their church. Watch me. Now we never done this, so we we're gonna have our own service. But he invited the church, and we were just creating a relationship. So I said, cool. We'll bring the church over there. He said, I want you to preach. I said, cool. And 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 I told my other buddy who was my best friend, and uh, he said, man, you stop it. Now talk to me about it. Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. What just happened there? Yeah. He said, man, that man promised to help me. Well, that, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. I didn't even know him when you knew him. When people promise to help you and they do not, don't become bitter. Yeah. Don't become resentful. Yeah. Amen. Because what it proves is that you were literally depending on them more than you were depending on the Lord. Right. It became bitter. Relationship just started falling apart. Yeah. Be careful. It's folks that my wife deal with, I don't deal with. Right. But I don't try to turn my wife against them. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. She still still be like, hey, hey, girl, go on, come on. I'll be like, hey. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Right. Right. And I'm not being rude, I'm gonna respect you. Right. But the point I'm trying to drive home is that when you become jealous, you feel that your value is being threatened. Yeah. The question is, who's established your value system? Wow. Wow. Because if your value is only predicated upon how people receive you, you ain't valuable whatsoever. If your value is only predicated upon who you are around and who you are connected to, you have no value. That's why Jesus says, have sold in your sales. Y'all yes. are talking to me in here. Yes. You got to have something to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Value is everything. All right? So watch this. Jealousy, when it goes undetected in people around you at times, it is because people are good at doing what? Putting on face in public. Watch this. And I say this because... Jealousy is silent anger and envy together. Jealousy is silent anger and envy together. That is suppressed and when they are aroused, the host of those emotions feels threatened and provoked, lacking the ability to further restrain and suppress their toxic feelings. When they emerge, they emerge and manifest as slander. People start slandering you. Bitterness, hostility, vindictiveness, disruption, sabotage, and just like in our text, murder. Mm. Amen, somebody. Mm. Jealousy, watch what I'm about to tell you. Jealousy is a direct sign of inferiority and insecurity. It's a direct sign. When you become inferior to somebody else, and you are insecure in your own self. Amen, somebody. Amen. Whenever you are threatened by someone else's giftings and possessions, it highlights and exposes the infection that's in your soul. Yeah. Because jealousy is unfinished soul work. So when you are jealous of somebody else, it exposes the infection that's in your soul. Amen, somebody. Whenever anger goes unchecked, it dissolves and destroys reason and rationale. It blinds a person to true reality, so perception becomes reality. And because the anger has gone unchecked, 
that person lacks the ability to reason. Therefore, what, they, what that person perceives as reality is actually deception. Amen, somebody. Therefore, when reality becomes an illusion, it can only lead to delusion. Whenever that happens, you're walking around with this illusion that somebody is more credible and more valuable than you. And that perception becomes your reality. And so it leads to delusion. You, be, you just be delusional. Have you ever been sitting down talking to somebody? They be like, oh man, they jealous of me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't you did. No, you, know, you better be careful. You better be careful. Because you can't tell that to everybody. Praise the Lord. Now watch this. Saul and David are clear examples of how one's value can feel threatened and how the spirit of murder and sabotage can arise in a person's heart instantaneously. I'm gonna say this and I wanna deal with this other part and we're gonna get out of here. Write this in your margin, 1 Samuel. 18 and one through 16. All right. Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him, watch this, as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not allow him to go back home to his father's house anymore. Watch this. Then Jonathan and David made a what? A covenant. Because he loved his own soul. He loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe and that was on him and, and gave it to David with his armor, even his sword and his bow and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and how did he behave wisely? And Saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted, watch this, in the sight of all of the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Now it had happened. As they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that's when he killed Goliath, that the women had come out of all of the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, joy, and with musical instruments. Watch this. So the women sang and they danced and they said, Saul, they killed his thousands. But David, his tens of thousands. Saul said, what? I can kill thousands, but he'll kill tens of thousands. Be careful when people start affirming you and building you because everybody don't see you in that light. Watch this. Then Saul was very angry. He was very jealous. And watch this. The saying displeased him. And he said, they, they rather have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me they have only ascribed thousands. Now, what more can he have but the kingdom? If they talking like that, he going to take my chair. Watch this. So Saul eyed David from that day forward with an eye of jealousy. And it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul. Watch this. And he prophesied inside the house. So David played with music. With his hand, watch this, at all times, watch this, but there was a spear in Saul's hand. Saul is trying to kill this man. Mm. And Saul cast the spear for he said, watch this, I will pin David to the wall, but David escaped his presence twice. Somebody can become that jealous of you that they try to kill you and God makes a way of escape. Mm -hmm. Now Saul was afraid of David. Because the Lord was with David, but the Lord had departed from Saul. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Saul removed him from his presence, watch this, and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and he came in before the people. And David behaved wisely in his presence at all times. And the Lord was with David. Therefore, when Saul saw that David behaved wisely, watch this, he was afraid of him. Why? Because David didn't try to do to Saul what Saul was trying to do to him. That's why Jesus said, just pray for these people because when you do it, you heat coals of fire on their head. 
Watch this. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. Your value must never be estimated or appraised through the lens of others. Your value must never be estimated or appraised through the lens of others. Amen, somebody. I'm going to jump down and I'm going to give you this part and we're going to go home. The reason so many of us today don't understand what true value is is because, listen, some of us have never been affirmed. And that's all right. That, 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 that's all right. Watch this. But what you need to understand is that God has already affirmed you. I want you to go to the Hebrews 12 chapter. Hebrews 12, watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 15. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. He says, look in carefully lest anyone fall short of the what? Grace of God. Listen to what it says. Lest any root of bitterness uh -huh. springing up cause trouble and by this many are defiled uh -huh. just by having bitterness within you bitter people are silently broken people bitter people are silently broken people you gotta be careful when people do things to you that you forgive quickly you got to learn how to release people quickly. Because listen to how the Bible explains bitterness. It's a root. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, lay the axe to the root. So that if it is the root, then murder becomes the fruit of that root. Yeah. Vindictive behavior becomes the fruit of that. Sabotage becomes the fruit. So many times we look at the fruit in people's lives, but we don't look at the root. Right. God told Cain, he says, watch this. He says, sin is at your door. Jealousy is at your door. That's the root of the matter. But he committed murder, which became the fruit of the root. Right. Right. Because he did not subdue it. It took control of him. And so watch this. Bitter people are silently broken people. Get healed. Yes. Yes. Get healed. Because everybody that come in your life, amen, if they do anything remotely close to the, what the last person did in your life, you're going to put all of them in the same category. Same category. You got to get healed. Amen, somebody. Watch this. And so when you understand this, bitterness is actually borderline hate. If you stay bitter long enough, eventually it's going to turn to hate. And you got to be careful because the enemy wants to see you bitter. Yeah. So I'm closing right here. Another reason we got to be careful with bitterness is because when people come into people's lives that we value, mm -hmm. that we genuinely value, and they start affirming the people that we've already been affirming, mm -hmm. we can become, watch this, very bitter because we start feeling like we're not valuable anymore. You got to learn how to start praying for competent people to come along qualified people to come alongside. This is what we need to be endorsing in the body of Christ or just in your regular relationships. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That every individual you hang around is a quality individual. Yes, 
Yes. Everybody you connect to, they are competent individuals. You don't need nobody around you pulling you down. Now. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. And so why do we need to be careful that bitterness doesn't rise up? That no form, the Bible says, of bitterness rises up because when you become bitter with people who are affirming the people that you affirm, if you don't check it, you become possessive. True. This is how possessiveness is born. And when possessiveness is born, you don't want nobody to have no dealings with nobody you in connection with. And you become possessive. Hmm. It's how some people end up killed in relationships. If I can't have you, can't nobody else have you. Baby, listen, if I can't have you, obviously my time up, it's been good. I'm going to holler. I ain't about to jeopardize my life and my time. Mm -mm. Else trying to chase you down and kill you. Praise the Lord. Maybe I might go out to give me somebody who ain't as fine. I'll work your break. Praise the Lord. <laughs> long she ain't crazy in here. We can get along. She, she believe in getting up, going to work, and man, clean the house. We good. <laughs> get all that stuff. Remember my uh, a music teacher told me some years ago, she said, I don't, I can't tell you what she said. I'm like, but I'm going to tell you half. I'm going to tell you, I can't tell you like she said. Praise the Lord. Mary, everyone, the truth. Y'all ain't talking to me, but I'm going to tell you how she said. Mary said, I don't hang around no fine. Y'all don't do it. That was Mary, Every she said, every last one of my friend girl, ugly, big, and thick, and I ain't worried about nobody taking my man because I ain't got time to be in competition with nobody. <laughs> I said that, I said, nah, wait a minute, God. <laughs> I'm in high school, hey, amen, and that thing went on with me all the way to my adulthood. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm so secure. I'm so confident in who I am. Denzel Washington walk through that door. Idris Elder, who, who, who else, baby? I don't know. Well, praise, praise the Lord. All right. Uh, <laughs> the Rock. You, you, you hear me? Do you smell? I mean, hey, <laughs> Chris Tucker, do you hear the word that is coming out of my mouth? I, I don't care who walk through that door. I'm confident. You'll be amazed at how many men call my wife and talk. I don't be all on no phone, all in no face like this. Like, who are they? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> and why are you calling in time? <laughs> I'm fine with that. Because here's what we need to understand. When you are valued, right. Right. you are appreciated. Absolutely. Ain't nobody just going to walk on out on somebody that they don't appreciate and value. That's right. That's true. Don't let it get control of you. Yes, yes. This is so important. When you see all of the stuff everybody on your feet, when you see all the stuff that's going on out there in the world, when people are killing people, robbing people, taking from people, do you not understand that's jealousy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As a gospel preacher, as a gospel pastor, I'm not the best preacher in this city, in this nation, in this world. Bishop T.D. Jakes can walk through that door right now. Bishop Ivy Hill. Rock Parsley. Whoever. Can walk through that door right now. And I would not diminish in who I am. Amen. Amen. I will respect them. Amen. I will honor them. Amen. But when it comes down to me doing and being 
who God has called me to be and doing what God has called me to do. You can call the greatest name. They can't do nothing with me when I'm in my element. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. When I'm in my element. Yes. That's it. I'm not called to do what somebody else do. That's right. That's why I don't follow what everybody, I don't believe in following trains and all that. I don't got time for that. Eli trained Samuel Wright. Yeah. <laughs> when Samuel thought that he was hearing the ear of a man, he said, no, it ain't me. He says, God. Yeah. He says, and the next time he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant, listen. Yeah. 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 Don't let your value be threatened. By those of you are connected to. If you're trying to connect to somebody just to feel valuable, you're not going to be valuable at all. Right. I don't connect to people because I want something from them. I connect to people because I want to give something to them. Yes. Hmm. One thing about me is I can talk your ears off. Why? Because I believe in pouring in the right. people. I believe in right. sowing in the people. Yes. You can call me and talk to me about some tennis shoes. Before you know it, we'll be talking about Revelation. Amen. Two and ten. Y'all ain't talking mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can't let a moment go by without truly engaging people. Yes. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God the praise. Hallelujah. I want to extend Christ. Maybe someone that's here. Someone that is online. You're viewing, you're listening. And maybe God is speaking to you to make a decision to connect to this ministry. Maybe some need to recommit and rededicate their lives to God. Some are not necessarily in a church. Maybe you need watch care. But this is a time that you can come. If you're online, there is someone online who can lead you in the right places and guide you. Yeah. Just right where we are, I just want you to Lift your hands and close your eyes and just receive this worship at yes, this time. Lord, Lord. As we're believing that God is adding to his church. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yes. So you cleansed me up inside. You thought I was to die.
Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. It's time to give up to the Lord. If you don't have a tithe and offering envelope, I ask you to raise your hand. The gatekeepers will get that to you. If you're online and you're desiring to give, there should be something online. Ways for you to give, amen, as we're giving unto the Lord. We never take for granted the ability to give to the Lord. We always know that it is a blessing. It is a privilege to give to the Lord. And as we give to him, we can't outgive him. Yeah. He continues to give back to us. Double what we give to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of the light. And we thank him for the greatest gift of all, his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray, Father. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. That none will suffer lack, God, for what they have given, God, but that you would greatly increase them according to the faith, God. Even your word, we always pray, God, and we thank you for it, oh God, because we realize that you will rebuke the devourer for our name's sake, that nations according to your word will rise up and call us blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, as we're getting ready to leave, I ask you, very briefly that we stay back just want to give us something for the end of the month amen and I want to make sure that we're all in agreement with that amen thanking God always for our visitors come on give God praise amen amen it's Super Bowl Sunday amen and uh, they cheated my team out uh, of the Super Bowl yes, they uh, you know, praise yes, the Lord they you, you, you know, uh, they put a hit this on my quarterback, hey man, trying to you know, break his arm early on so he couldn't throw another pass. Yeah. Then they try to kill my fourth screen quarterback, but nonetheless, I praise God, hey amen. Uh, this brother standing over here with this Chiefs jersey on, hey amen. We we gonna pray for you, praise the Lord, hey amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going for the Chiefs today because uh, the Eagles, uh, we need their queen book today, praise the Lord. Pray the Lord. <laughs> but we want to enjoy, amen. Even as we go home, we celebrate with friends and family, amen. Let's enjoy this day. Let's stay safe, amen. Let's stay safe. Let's bow, God. We thank you for what you've done in this place. Yes, thank you, oh God, for the word and what you've shared with us on today, God. Yes. We yes. pray, oh God, that you will go down from this place with us and keep us, God. That no hurt, harm, no danger shall come now out dwelling. How we thank you, how we bless you, how we glorify you. We honor you now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to you.